Hello, my name is Vitotas Butrimas. In this MLM, I'm going to talk about the cyber attacks on Ukraine's power grid in 2015 to 2016. It's a, uh, uh, a part one of a two-part series on cyber attacks on Ukraine's power grid. Uh, a very significant event for the electric utility industry because we had a, a successful cyber attack on a power grid control system which had a physical effect. What led to and happened on December 23rd, 2015? Well, we have to think of a, uh, a political and military context uh, to this. There was a conflict between Russia and Ukraine. In 2014, Russia annexed a part of uh, Ukraine, the uh, Crimea province, and uh, the uh, things started to uh, uh, conflict along and simmer. On 22 November 2015, an unknown group blows up pylons supporting the electric supply to Crimea. The utility uh, commenced repair operations, but uh, the uh, appearance of the demonstrators interfered with the repair operations and slowed things down. The Russian Minister of Energy was quick to blame the Ukrainian government for deliberately uh, slowing down the repair process. But that's not the whole story. Uh, part of the story is the uh, preparation phase. There was a cyber intrusion followed by a reconnaissance and preparation for an attack uh, that took place over several months. It started with uh, malware delivered to the business side of the uh, utility uh, via a spear phishing email with a uh, malicious attachment that provided the first foothold for the attacker and eventually uh, found a way uh, to get into the control system networks. He obtained credentials, uh, the authority uh, to do things on the network and increased access to other parts. So he really was uh, living there almost, uh, uh, walking through the, through the system, getting to know it well, and uh, he had all the information uh, to prepare an attack. A way eventually was found into, into the connected operational networks of the power grid control system. And uh, in the references, there's a video link where you can actually see the operator filming what, what, what actually happened uh, at his control station. He's watching the uh, cursor uh, and, and, and the mouse uh, uh, moving to the, where the breakers are uh, on the remote uh, SCADA uh, system and clicking them open and cutting power at 30 substations. He says, he's trying to reach the section breakers. Is he trying to switch them off? He was just confused. He, he even thought maybe the IT department was playing some kind of joke. The execution phase of the attack consisted of access to, to SCADA control used to remotely open breakers at over 30 substations. In particular, uh, the uh, serial to Ethernet servers used to communicate between SCADA control and the uh, substations were compromised or disabled with bad firmware planted on them, which resulted in uh, total operator loss of view and control of the uh, grid distribution system. The backup power or, or UPS was disabled also with bad firmware. At the end of the attack, uh, the attacker uh, wiped uh, the uh, hard drives and all the workstations using a uh, malware. And to further complicate uh, reaction and recovery efforts, uh, a denial of service attack against the operator's telephone system was performed. This had the uh, uh, additional uh, function of uh, uh, raising a great deal of anxiety by the customers uh, who could not call the utility to complain about a loss of power. And it also uh, further uh, complicated the operator's uh, uh, situational awareness. They couldn't get this information from their customers. The power utility uh, responded by going to manual control after the loss of their SCADA systems. And engineers had to get into the trucks and travel out to the affected substations to close the breakers and uh, power was restored. What actually happened on December 23rd is a remote uh, cyber intrusion uh, took place at three regional electric power distribution companies 
which resulted in the blackout impacting approximately a quarter of a million customers. The utility operator responded very quickly and restored power after a few hours. What are the takeaways from this MLM? First of all, we need to start thinking of our operations as targets and start preparing for them. Political conflicts can spill over into industrial operations. If your country is in conflict with another country, uh, you can expect some sort of cyber component to that conflict, as we saw in Ukraine. Your operations may get caught in the crossfire. The cyber intruder uh, in this case was pretty uh, advanced and sophisticated in uh, his or uh, her methods. They uh, seek to avoid detection and the presence may only become apparent after an attack has been executed. You know, this is uh, sadly uh, happens over and over again. The attack comes as a complete surprise to the victim. We need to check internet connected business networks they must be separated from control networks. Uh, this seems pretty much common sense, and many operators will say, well, this is not an issue. We're not connected to the internet. You need to check and make sure, especially if you are a big operation, it's really hard to keep track of what's connected to what, and uh, there's always a way to get in. Uh, we think back to the 300 Spartans at Thermopylae. King Leonidas was pretty confident that uh, he was very capable, he, he, he knew his situation, but uh, somebody found a, a back pass uh, from behind across the mountain, and, and uh, we know what the result. So we can never be too sure of ourselves. Remote access policies should be strictly and actively controlled. Uh, if, uh, if you allow it, make sure someone is monitoring it, sets up the rules, when to get in, when to leave, uh, and, and to check that the uh, opening is closed. This is especially when a vendor needs to get in to do some uh, maintenance work and, and can't come in on site physically. Also, during the COVID crisis, remote access is uh, more frequently used, and it's, uh, all, again, we need to double check our procedures for that. The capability to monitor equipment and control networks for anomalous behavior is required for early detection and response to a breach. Uh, if you don't have anybody looking, I mean, you might have somebody at the workstation and uh, monitoring what the physical process is doing, you're generating, distributing uh, electricity, but you really need a special person, a special unit with skills to actually monitor for a cyber intrusion. Is somebody uh, running about your networks and uh, recording information and, and which can be possibly used for an attack or is uh, actually planting malware on your systems, you need to have somebody looking for that. And it's also useful to evaluate the applicability of the ISA 62443-3 standard for system security, especially part three, the system security requirements and security levels. For further information, there are uh, related MLMs. Uh, there's the part two that's coming uh, after this uh, uh, MLM on Ukraine. There's a very nice article published by ISCA uh, on uh, the Ukrainian attack that I just discussed, uh, looking th specifically through the lens of the 62443-3 standard uh, security requirements and security levels. You can also watch the video of the grid operator's description of the attack on December 23rd. And the uh, US uh, CISA has also issued uh, information uh, in the form of alerts on this incident. 